What's up, bitches? What up? I'm eating um, cinnamon oh, raisin God. toast, which I've been made fun of for in the past. Yeah, that's some old man bread. That's exactly the criticism that I've been given. That's definitely some old ass man bread. Yeah, but you know what, though? It tastes good. Don't tell me it doesn't taste good. It's underrated, man. Cinnamon. Here's why it's underrated. Because people rate it like a 0 out of 10. Yeah, because those are two things that shouldn't go together. Are you eating that shit just plain? No, there's butter on it. Oh, okay. But I don't get how... Like, someone must have dropped a bucket of cinnamon on some raisins. And been like, that shit's not that bad. Because you don't just come up with that mix. It does flow, though, now. You know, like... If someone were to say raisin, like if you were playing hundred dollar pyramid, I'm into that show lately, and the clue was raisin, and someone was like cinnamon, I'll be like raisin. Yeah, that mixes. That's like the classic now. You know, like if you're saying cinnamon, there's not much else that I'm gonna say after that shit. Like cinnamon. I like how Adrew kept bringing up the oatmeal raisin cookies that I like. Yeah, but he didn't add that in the thing, did he? In Was in a it? past episode, he probably did. Oh, in the past episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oatmeal raisins, grimy. Oh, stop oh. it! You think it's bad? Actually, damn, oat raisin is just a low key, like chef's best friend that pairs with a lot of good things. You know, that's what oatmeal I'm saying. Raisin. Cinnamon raisin, and also, it's not that's bad for you either. A lot of stuff that tastes good is bad for you, but raisins are actually mad good for you. Uh, are they? Because mm-hmm. like that, like red box with the lady on it. Mm-hmm. She definitely was racist as shit. <laughs> <laughs> but those shit probably have mad like sugar in it or something like that. Let's she brings it up. That lady, she's got like the headband on and stuff, right? Like she definitely was. Her husband was definitely some like racist ass Confederate dude. Are raisins healthy? And, and she, her husband definitely was just like, why don't you go start a business or something like that? And she was like, all right, we got all these people here. You're Sorry, talking about raisins. California Raisins. That's the name of the company, I think. That's the Red Box? No, yeah. I don't think it's California Raisins. California Raisins. California Cation. I think it's California Raisins. Let me see. Nah, it's California not. California Raisins Box. Yes, it oh. is. Sun, sun-made natural California Raisins. They're the called first sun-made. Thing that I thought was like, oh, sun-made. Sun-made, yeah. yeah, but it's sun-made California, natural California raisins. Let me see what this bitch looks like. She's not picking her own raisins, or she's picking grapes that make raisins. No, but you're right that she's racist as fuck. OD, OD, like she's wearing the racist ass hat. Like nobody wears that. And hat. she lived and, in like 1905. Yeah, like she's not in like. Let's put it this way: She's not from a year before nineteen, uh, year after nineteen seventy, because she's no wearing just Handmaid's Tale shit. Uh, so I want to look up when Sun Made Raisins Wiki. Now I'm gonna ask you. Well, I'm gonna ask you a quick question, and I think the answer to this shit's gonna be no, which is gonna be surprising. Do you eat Raisin Bran cereal? From time to time, I have, but it's not a mainstay. It's not like you go to the grocery store nah. and. You- but you would go into the bread aisle and pick out some cinnamon raisin bread. From time to time, I do do that, yeah. Hmm. By the way... Why don't you want cinnamon raisin cereal? Or is it just... Oh, it's raisin bran cereal. It's raisin bran. But some of them come with... There's like, a, I think, a cinnamon version. But it's good. The crunchy one is my favorite. The crunchy uh, raisin bran? There's a crunchy raisin bran? Crunchy raisin bran. Mad raisin good. Raisin bran's actually a pretty popular cereal for like being a raisin cereal. I'm telling you, you you're giving you're not giving raisins you're not giving raisins their credit, bro. Raisins is a dried up grape, right? <laughs> yeah, gr- dried up grape. <laughs> I, I fucked it up too. By the way, dried up grape. Founded 1912 that company was, so she was oh. dumb racist. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And she's That's definitely from like, what's that? Shout out to her, like she's ahead of like the Me Too movement and shit. She's a bitch who started like her own company, you know? Or did they just put? I like, making that up. She's on the cover. It doesn't mean she she created it. She's holding a freaking barrel of grapes. She must have had some influence in starting the company, unless they just like we could really get into this. And then they just 
really capitalized on this lady picking raisins, and then they took her picture, and she probably got no money from that shit. Wait, are they mad left wing? They say it says it's a privately owned American cooperative of raisin growers. The word cooperative there is interesting. Does that no, mean that means like conservative, in my opinion? Seems like they like. Are from a really if it's a worker account. cooperative, that means that all the workers get to democratically decide what happens with the company, which would mean they're mad left wing. But it just says American cooperative. It says privately owned American cooperative of raisin growers. That's why I don't like that. I feel like there's like a couple raisin executives at the top that just make all the raisin decisions. Like the dude who runs Raisin Bran knows the head of Sun Made Raisins, who knows the you know the inventor of cinnamon raisin. And they all just decide what they want to do about the raisins in the world. It says that they're the biggest raisin company in the world. Isn't there a candy that's made with raisins too? There's a raisinets. A they're mad good. Those are the chocolate with the raisins yes, on the inside. And they're mad good. Those are low key, like been in movie theaters since like 1914. But if you fuck up and go to the wrong movie theater, you'll get a box from 1914 because no one's really ordering those shits. You're bugging. They're mad good. You think good. people get people those? Order them. Yeah. Actually, that is true, because if you watch the previews to the movies, like there's always the raisin dancing around and shit like raisinets that. Raisinets are mad good, and people respect the hell out of raisinets. And then also, well, these aren't raisins, but snow caps are good. I think that was like the first candy I ever got at the movies was snow caps. Those shits break your teeth. But I was a kid. I didn't care. You know what's banging? What? Milk duds. They're a little too chewy. Nah. Nah, what milk duds nah? are still... If you get a good box of milk duds, it's at the right... Milk Duds is like a fine wine. It's got to be stored in the right perfect temperature. You keep that shit in a little bit too warm and the chocolate will start mixing together and you put your hand in the box and like four or five will come out together because the caramel sticks together. Oh, wait, no, are the Milk Duds the t really hard ones or are they the chew too chewy ones? No, it's the chocolate with the caramel. And it's like, it's more chewy. Okay, so then I forget which one I'm thinking of that's mad hard. No, no, no. Uh, nerds? No, no, no. I'm thinking chocolate shit. That's oh, hard. chocolate hard shit? Yeah. I don't know, but do you think the Sun Maid Lady and Aunt Jemima were, like, homegirls? Nah. The the Sun Maid Lady is racist as fuck. Nah, but I think she probably, like, was cool with Aunt Jemima because she was, like, the cover girl. They basically are the she same She definitely shit. tried to boss around Aunt Jemima, and Aunt Jemima was like, Bitch, who are you? They're the same lady. It's just white and black. It's mad racist. It's like, we'll put the black lady on syrup, and we'll put the white lady on some raisins. Wait, why is... Why is the syrup racist? <laughs> like mad, like sugary and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't get the connection. But raisins, are raisins sugary? Yeah, they're grapes, right? Are grapes sugary? Yeah. I don't get how like all these We're snobby so people fucking drink stupid, wine. it's hilarious. <laughs> no, but I don't get how all these people, like snobby people drink wine, but if they really break it down, there's like some farmer stepping on grapes to get that shit. <laughs> stepping on grapes? Right? Isn't that how you get wine? I'm going to type in... Yellow and DeGeneres shows and shit like that. Do people step on grapes today? <laughs> There's got to be a better process. Stomping... A brief history of stomping wine. I'm not reading this whole shit. It Hold says on. it's a rare practice. There you go. On. So most of the time they don't do it like that anymore. Oh, they don't really step on it anymore? It says, the practice of stomping on grapes is still used by some wineries in Portugal and Spain, but it's rare. Oh, you're definitely... Hold on. It's definitely rare as fuck. There was mad shit that I wanted to say, but I just totally forgot it. Oh, so there's a, the lady... All right. Warren Collett Peterson, the model for the glowing young woman on the sun-made sun raisin box, <laughs> died here Wednesday. Was racist as fuck. <laughs> she was 90 years old. Wait, when did she die? Um, April 1st, 1983. Oh, she's been dead for so long. <laughs> wait, I think that was... Oh, wait. Hold on, when was this? Yeah, 1983. Now, all right, so look how they... This is just a, like, a litmus test. And, and dead ass of, like, how we write stuff in uh, articles. Like, so they described her as... The glowing young woman on the sun-made raisin box. Now let's just see how they describe Aunt Jemima. <laughs> um, 
Is Aunt Jemima a real person? The R.T. Davis Milling Company hired a former slave, Nancy Green, as a spokesperson for Aunt Jemima Pancake Mix in 1890. Nancy Green was born in Montgomery, Kentucky, and played Jemima character from nineteen from eighteen ninety until her death on August thirtieth. She why isn't she wonderful? <laughs> or glowing. You know, that's fucked up. Aunt Jemima was way more popular than the raisin lady. <laughs> and she's actually even she even smiles on the on the syrup. No, the raisin you, bitch doesn't even You're looking too deep like, in this. <laughs> no, the raisin bitch is like this. Her face is like She's almost giving her face like, don't don't buy some raisins. Sun-made Go. California raisins. Look at her Gosh. face. Her face is dead ass like, are you sure you want to buy raisins? <laughs> she's smiling. No, she's not. Yeah, she is. The picture I'm looking oh, at, she's look smiling. At a different one. I'm looking at one where she's sort of frowning, and then one. It would be hilarious if in like the corner of your phone it said some porn you were looking at before. See? I do, just... yeah. That one is from like 1912, bro. Yeah, it's like the first joint. Yeah, that one. Nobody has ever seen that box. I bet you that box goes for like a thousand dollars now. That shit is five ninety five on eBay. No you one know what's crazy? Buy- if you save old shit, like it could be worth a lot at some point. Oh, I know. I, I think I my dad once had um or he sold it to this guy. It was an old video game. It was called Wizard of War, and um, you just like. It was like an arcade game, and there was two joysticks, and you like went through the shit. So he had, had the straight-up arcade thing? The straight-up arcade game, and he thought he was going to get a lot of money for it. What did he get for it? He got like 550 bucks or something. Okay, that's not is, Yeah, that's not crazy, but it's still better than, than yeah, nothing. Yeah, but some people, yeah, if you hold on. Like, think of when you're a kid, and you have like some... Like, all these old people that say they have like old baseball cards of like Joe DiMaggio. That's and what I'm Luke saying. Perfect. I shit. still have Pokemon cards that are probably worth some of them. My buddy texted me the other day. He said, like, an original Charizard went for some crazy amount of money. Let's look that up. No way. I'm, I swear to God. Let me tell you. Hold on. I have an original Charizard. Do you really? Not like a first edition joint. Original Charizard Pokemon card price or value. I think I even have a Japanese Charizard, too. All right. There's a Charizard Pokemon going for 4000 on eBay. What, there's got to be some. Is it first edition? And like, wait, 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 wait. Here you go. First edition Charizard sold for one hundred and seven thousand. Jesus. One hundred and seven thousand dollars, bro. For first edition, wow. One hundred and seven thousand dollars. I don't even know. Like all the company had to do was put a first edition stamp on the card. Like if say you had a boy who worked at Pokemon. I see where my Pokemon cards are right now. By the way, for real? Yeah, they're right over there. Holographics. Yeah, the, I think all the holographic ones I have in like a little book. I should get my shit shipped out to um to Illinois. I got them in New York, and I got I got bangers. Like I got some heat. I was talking to Andrew about this. I got some heat. That shit probably go for good money. But I'm too yeah, but, lazy to sell it. it. But if it's not um a first edition, I think it, I have a first edition Zapdos. That I mean, that could be worth money. You know what I but mean? It might be creased or some shit. I think so. I think I traded it with but someone. If some of my shit is not worth money, I'm gonna be pissed though because, like, I legit had money on it. <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say. Is I tortured my poor mom like to go to Squiggy's, the card place, and then I'd be like, I want that one, and it'd be like a fifty dollar card. Meanwhile, all he did was open up the packet and like find it and put it in a case and say this one's fifty dollars. Yeah. Fuck the owners of, like, these comic shops, man, because they were creepy. And all they did, yeah, was just buy mad Pokemon cards, open up the packs, and then, like, they basically took advantage of little kids. Yeah, not but, in, like, a dirty way, but, like, to just steal their money. But if that shit, if I, if we paid $50 for it and now it's worth $4,000. Then the, that guy looks like an idiot. This one, on, this one on eBay, Charizard, Pokemon card, hologra- holographic, 4000 Yeah, but did any sell? Because someone could just put it for $4,000. Look at sold items. Let's see. Do they have multiple ones? Oh, I don't know. Well, first, it would, I don't know what first edition means of like how many That's of them. That's what I'm saying. Made, you know? The years, though, line up. It says 1999 Pokemon uh, Charizard 3000. 1999 is definitely like when I got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I mean? Like, or maybe it was definitely 90s. Charizard was the hottest one. Imagine you have like a $200,000 card just chilling. 
I wouldn't do anything with it. Like, if someone was like, all you got to do is put it on eBay and just, like, sell it, I'd be like, <laughs> like nah, too much work. Like, because one, it's in New York. So I'd have to tell my mom to, like, go. There's the no way she downstairs. would send you the right thing. That's she what would, I'm saying. She, if she would send, send you, like, some old baseball cars that are, like, ripped. Or send and then, you... like, yep, the shit would get dented or creased or some shit. Yeah, I just wouldn't want to put it on eBay. I'm too lazy. I've, I've put stuff on eBay before, but I've got so much shit I could put on eBay, and I just don't do it. You know somebody who does that as a full-time job. They're like an eBay seller, right? My uncle used to do that. He like started Oh, he a, used to do it? I thought he still did it. He still does it, I think. He might not anymore, really. Um, but he started with like a jewelry business. He would sell like Michael Kors stuff, and his wife was like always going to the department stores and like getting deals on all these like belts and everything. And then he'd flip them? He'd flip them, and then he started, like, um, buying more stuff and flipping it and going to trade shows and getting, like, bulk stuff and selling it. And then he upgraded and started selling, like, BMWs on eBay and made mad money. Selling BMWs on eBay sounds like a pain in the ass. Yeah, but, I mean, like, if you make a little bit, like, you know, if you just up the price a little bit or something like that, you're making so much more of one sale than... I wonder how he ships it. Necklaces. Is there, like, a company that just ships, like, vehicles? I don't know how he did it, to be honest. I'm pretty sure he sold BMWs, unless he just sold, like, a BMW hat one time or something, and I just... <laughs> like, him selling cars. That would be quite a difference. <laughs> Either a hat or the actual car. Yeah. <laughs> I think my mom used to have a BMW keychain that she had on, like, her beat-up old-ass Ford Mustang. What year was her Mustang? This shit was beat the fuck up. Maybe, like, 1984 or something like oh, that. Oh, so, like, a really old-school Mustang. Yeah. No, but it was, like, an in-between Mustang where it was, like, trying to be cool. But it wasn't, like, one of those old, like, you know, like, vintage yeah, ones. Yeah, vintage ones. It was, the one, it was, like, the era when it sucked. Yeah. People say that the one I had was the era when it sucked, but fuck them, because I loved my Mustang. Oh, yeah. No, yours was definitely newer than hers. And then they have a new one now, I think, right? Is there a new Mustang? Let me type that in. New Ford Mustang. It's like when they came out with the Volkswagen Beetle. Like, I was never a fan of that shit. And even if I had one back in the day, I wouldn't, like, times change. It's not like you could just bring back, like, you could bring back a pair of jeans. The new one looks similar to the old ones. The Beetle? No, no, no. The new Ford Mustang. Oh. Like, they have, like, a template, and they kind of just go with the, that template, roughly speaking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's v- variation from year to year, mm-hmm. but it's not, it's not like, crazy different. No, the one she had didn't look like a Mustang. I wonder what... Maybe type in, like, 1990 Mustang or some shit. Let me see. So I'm not going to be able to see the picture. Uh, yeah, but I, won't, I will. <laughs> One of my imagine, first jobs was at the racing lady comes back up. <laughs> one of my first jobs was as a, at a a golf range, mm-hmm. and yep. I was the dude who like sold the buckets, and I would go like pick up the buckets when they're done hitting with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would. Yep. yep, it was the '90s joint. Okay, so but this 1990 Mustang is the car that the owner of the golf range had. Oh, for real? He was an older dude, and he drove that Mustang in red. It was definitely 1990 or around that year. Yeah, hers might have. I don't think hers was this cool looking. So it, it was. It was more whack. So let's let's look yeah, up it was, 1985 maybe. So 94 changed too much. No, so I think it's going back. Oh, type in 1985. That shit is buns. Let me see. This Mustang is buns skis. 85. 1985 Mustang. <laughs> straight buns bro i don't know it wasn't that one it was newer than that so i think okay. it was between, so 87 it was, type in 87 let's see and i i think it it was around the it had to be 87 it was the 87 shit mm, mm, no it wasn't was 87. It, what fucking year was it dude uh let me see 89 because it looks very similar to the 90 but i don't think it was the 90 1989 Mustang. Oh, that no. uh, that one's starting to get not bad. No, because... Hold on, let me see. We'll try 91. 
I like how everybody's listening to us and they can't see this and they're probably got to type along with us. 1991 Mustang. I don't think it, I think it might have been 90. Okay, maybe, but that shit is not whack if she kept it in good shape, though. Nah, nah, she didn't keep it in good shape. Her you gotta keep like, it clean, bro. You gotta keep it clean. The color she had was like this nasty ass gray color. It was like it was a dark gray. And it was the car was just beat. Let me see, ninety seven. <laughs> my shit was hot. My uh, my two thousand four. Yeah, see, it starts. Changing. Yeah, no, I liked yours, the silver joint. That was my. I, remember, I went with you to go pick it up. You remember we went down to Long Island and the guy like, didn't one guy not show up and then the guy came back from the beach or something like that to to sell you the car? No, you, you were that? with me when we picked it up. You were with me when we went to go look at it. Oh yeah, and it was oh, like yeah. closed or something. Was it? Yeah. Well, like unless was, you went with me a different yeah. time that I'm not thinking of. Yeah, I think I was with you. My memory is silent. straight trash. But yeah, the 2004 Mustang. And, and this is the era that people, like real car aficionados, think like my year was the single worst year. Like was the wackest of all whack years. Why? Why don't people like that one? I don't know, man. See, that's the thing I never understood. Like, there's this, like, opinion in the car world. They have opinions. And yeah. it's like everybody has that opinion. It's not, like, there's no variation in it. And everybody okay. says, like, the 2004 Mustang, like, in that era, like, the late 90s to the, to, like, the maybe 2010, like, that whole time span is just, like, all whack Mustangs. And I always felt like the one that I had, the year I had, and just so everybody knows, I I got it. It was the first car that I actually got and it was like it was used and it only had like 10,000 miles on it I remember yeah and I got it I got it for for 10 grand oh, I'm looking at Mustangs so, by year no by the way, was it you're... 10 grand or like 8 grand I got a really good deal on it it only had like 10,000 miles on it and I got a really good deal on it mm -hmm. and I thought it was so cool I was like this is the best car ever I remember yeah. like driving around in that shit yep all right, so her shit had to have been 92 or 90. It might have been 93. I think it was the Mustang Cobra. Yeah, the 93 one is type whack. I think the 1991 was nicer than the 93 one. Yeah, no, I think she had a 1993 Mustang Cobra. Yeah, this one's whack. Really Mustang whack. Cobra. You know what? You know which ones I don't like. That was what she had. Okay, this is gonna sound hilarious, but any Mustangs that don't have a big ass are not good looking. <laughs> You've always been a big ass. <laughs> I know, but that that tell me that doesn't make sense though. When you look at like the '93 Mustang, look at the ass on it. It's mad skinny. Yeah, it's slayed. It's like a mad skinny ass. So you go. To, yeah. But like, if you look at the 2004 joint. Yeah, but 2004 joint too, even. No, my shit had buns. <laughs> look, look at it. It's got buns that are like propped up. What is that, the 2000 Mustang? 2004. Oh, 2004. Yeah, and you'll see like the picture I'm looking at right now, you, where you see like the, the tail lights. Oh, yeah, yeah, it pops see? out. It, 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 it's like propped up. Yeah. Yeah. So when did it make a big switch again in 2006? When was the next jump? The one, the one after 04, You mean like yeah, when, when they changed it? Yeah, it was actually. I think it was. Drastically it was different. the next year. The next year they changed it. Two thousand five. They tried to go like more retroy. Oh yeah, that's a big change. But people liked it when they tried to go more retroy. So you like, don't like that one? It's okay. You had but, to get two thousand five too, right? What's that? You had the option to get a two thousand five joint too, right? Like it would have been way more expensive, but no, I didn't. I didn't like that one as much. I didn't like the retro we look. I liked the, the 04 shit. And you wanted silver too, right? I think I wanted black originally, but I ended up settling on silver. Oh, see, that's my... my. I gotta have black's number one for color car to get. But um, that shit cannot stay clean if it's black unless you wash it like a motherfucker. That's what they say, but then they say some shit about white too. Like, what's the thing about white? No, white, white is bad, right? but not... in. This is in my experience... Yeah. White is bad, but not as bad as black. Black for cars is gets the dirtiest the quickest. The best really? is... I thought it was the other way. Nah. Well, I mean, white does get dirty quickly compared to other colors, but it's not as bad as black. Black is the worst, in my opinion. 
I always just do like I get mad at anybody that drives some other color shit than like black, white, or silver. Now you're kind of bugging on that because there's... if you go to a dealership and you're buying a red car, or you're buying a blue car, like when I like I don't know the type of person I am when I like I I get, my belt has to match like my socks and my shoes or some shit or else I'd be off. Like I can't have a black belt and some like. I, you, I feel like you could do this. I've seen you maybe do this before, like have a black belt and maybe some brown shoes on and just be fine no, with it. No, no, no. Never. Bra- I very rarely, I don't know if I've ever wore brown shoes. Oh, really? I'm a very, when it comes to like belts and shoes, I'm very okay. traditional in terms of the colors I use. Okay. But I'll throw, I'll throw a mean shirt at you though. Like I'll throw a, like a purple joint at you. Oh just, yeah, no, boom. you could kill that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but I, but I never, I don't really go nuts with the belt and the. And the shoes, like, that's usually black or, you know, maybe gray. But here's my thing about, like, a blue car or a red car. If you're wearing, like, a red shirt or some shit, you're going to clash with your car. Like, the shit just doesn't match. Like, just nah, get you... some straightforward black, white, or silver. Nah, you're sort of bugging. You're Even though sort of... I like that gray, that gunmetal gray. So, I'm, I like, um... Nah, because you could have, like, I've seen so many nice, like, there's certain shades of blue, which are just so nice, that, like... But, but you gotta look at that every day, like, it's nice for, like, a month. Nah, I could fuck with, I could fuck with a nice blue... All the time? All the time, yeah. And well, it's, o- gotta, it's okay to me that it pops. Yellow shit. It's okay to me that it pops and that it's different. I'm not, I'm not against that. So when someone comes down with like a sherbet orange ass like Wrangler, you're cool with it? <laughs> or like some fucking sure, lime man. green shit? Nah, not for nothing, man. There was a car that was like a. It was almost like a like a orangey color. Like a sherbet or some shit, right? It was it was an Infinity? What's that? What was that hot Infinity from back in the day? I, uh, yeah, a uh, G G thirty five. Some yeah, I think so. Infin- I think we just solved something. We actually got something right. Infinity. I think that's it. Infinity G thirty five orange. Let me see if this that pops car used up. To be the shit. That's why. No, was it a G thirty five? It was a G something, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> GST? Nah, it wasn't GST. Infin- GT. Okay, but let me type in a different year, like two thousand eight Infinity G thirty five. And you remember the um, Dodge Neon? Everybody had that shit. Jimmy had, Jimmy that. had that. Yeah. And then the Acura TLs were the shit. Yeah, I really like those. Those were nice. Like, if you worked at an Acura dealership between the years of whenever we were, when, when were we were in, we graduated 2010? 2006, we graduated high school. Oh, so if you, if you worked at an Acura dealership. <laughs> you were rich as fuck. Between 2006, maybe, <laughs> and 2008, dead ass, you're probably retired now on a beach. Everybody wanted an Acura when but we were. Their mother, if you were like an Italian chick, you had a yeah. white TL. You were like. <laughs> Like a Spanish chick, you had a TL. If you were like a Guido white dude, you had a TL. If you were like a Mexican dude, you had a TL. Everybody had a TL except me and you. <laughs> TLs, but legit, like all you had to do was work at the dealership, just going to work that day. Like literally, turn on your computer and there'd be a line of people, just like, all right, what color you want? Black, got you. White, got you. Black, got you. And then people used to steal the lights on the TLs too, because they they went for money. Um, okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to find it. Infinity G37, I think it is. Yeah, it does was that G- does that ring a bell? Maybe they all they're all starting to ring a bell right now. Infinity G37 coupe. I can't find the color I'm thinking of, but there was this color. There was like this orangey color, mm-hmm. which I thought was so. On point. It was just so like it was the perfect shade of orange, where it wasn't offensive. It was just like chilling. Infinity G thirty seven coupe rust orange. It was like a. I don't remember that car being in an orange. What car? What car do you remember being in orange? Wranglers. Like Wranglers would always be in funky cars. I think I've seen a lot out here in Illinois that's like an electric blue. It's like some like. Really, really electric blue. That's like almost too... Like, it'll be cool to drive past that and be like, oh, that color is dope. But then seeing that in your driveway every day has got to just be like, oh, what dude, the fuck ba- did I do? Back when I worked at the Chevy dealership, mm-hmm. 
they had produced a a lime green Camaro, like a bright lime, like a secular talk lime green Camaro. I think I remember that. That's that one. I agree with you where it's like, you could look at that for like a day and be like, that shit is fire. But then after a day, you don't want to walk to that in your garage. That's what I'm saying. And be like, and like what the fuck is this? If you work in an office building or some shit, you got to like walk to that yeah. car. Nah, you can't. Nah, nah, nah. You know? Not going to happen. Fuck that. It's too much. But not but not the Infinity though, I'm telling you. I can't find it. I can't find the one I'm thinking of. But there was this like perfect like orangey color where I was like, I thought it was such a good color. I used to it's like such- back in the day the Mitsubishi Eclipse was I thought fire. That was the shit. Like the old school that- Mitsubishi Eclipse? Yeah. 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 That are because the spoiler was crazy. On That's it. what I'm saying. Yeah. We yeah, but you know what? I feel like we were without even trying, we were like kinda Influenced by like Fast and the Furious in our era, nah. But Eclipse was before Fast and the Furious era. Was Eclipse it? Was the shit. Are you like that's even a hot ass name? Like yeah, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Eclipse. Yo, the, Mitsubishi the, makes everything, bro. Like I play golf and and the golf sh- some shafts. Like they make yeah. shafts. Hmm. I was like, does Mitsubishi? Is there anything they don't do? <laughs> make TVs too, I think. Right? Do they make TVs? I think so. Let me type in Mitsubishi TV. Gary, my stepfather had um. They do. He had a Mitsubishi uh, Montero. Montero's used to be the shit. Mitsubishi Montero. I just typed it yeah, in. Right now. My mom had that rusty ass Mustang, and she would always want to come pick me up in the Mustang. And I'd be like, Nah, can't you come get me in the Montero? I'm looking at the Montero right now. I love the Montero. Yeah, I, I like those. Rover. I like. I don't like the new, um, like the small SUVs that are like shaped like a shield they're more rounded i don't like those i like the more square like boxy you know what i'm saying like, like think, a land rover the boxy type of flesh. yeah think of like your old ford explorer from back in the day i love that car yeah and, and think of like the the chevy uh blazer from back in the day yeah like i like that the more boxy than the shieldy you know what i'm saying like the rounded look i didn't like i liked it when it was like a i don't know which type has a roundy joint what do you mean? Every everything today is more rowdy, except like there's a bunch of jeeps that are still normal. There's, oh yeah, but like everything else. I used to like the Jeep Grand Cherokee, like the old school Cherokee. And then I drove one one time, and I thought like I it, like the Jeeps just didn't drive smooth. But they didn't drive. Smooth. Yeah, that could be an issue. Car. I've never driven a Jeep, so I can not tell. But that yeah, I could see that being an issue. But like think of like the Chevy Traverse. That's what I have. Right, but that, like, back in the day, they had shit that was just shaped like the blazer, which was square. Yeah. That's what I mean by shield-shaped, is the traverse that's... Yeah, they changed the the model on it, because I didn't like the old one, and I had to make sure that I got, like, a 2019 one, or I think 18. Um, But the years before that, it looks like some caravan-y type of shit. Oh, the new one looks better. I just looked it up right now. That's actually not bad, the new traverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. But it's, the year it, before, it, it, you're thinking of that's the shieldy one that I don't like. Exactly. That's why I had to make sure that I didn't get that round shit. Yeah, I don't. I do not like the sh- the rounded shape. One car I would never drive, a Dodge Caravan. Dodge Caravan. That shit looks like a fucking round ass like pig. What I don't like is all the things that I like are not like, in style. Yeah. Dodge Caravan does look buns, but. It looks like like, all the shit I like is still out of style. Like, what I really like is clean lines. I like very, like, clean, straight lines. Yeah. And that hasn't been in style for a minute. So I feel like the Traverse, the new one you would like. That's more, the... that's cleaner, but it's still not clean enough for me. Oh, really? I like it very clean lines. Yeah. I could see that. But I feel like cars are trying to get, like, more aerodynamic now and be all, like, you know weirdly shaped yeah that's why they probably shape them like that is because they're like it's more aerodynamic or whatever which aerodynamic it'll come back in style the old school shit at just some like point the type of car yeah at some point they'll do that if you look at the old um wranglers i mean wranglers are still boxy but if you look at the old old ones those shits look like a straight fucking cardboard box yeah those are those might even be too much um yeah it looks way too much like it's, it looks like they just Jeep Wrangler, should I type in 2000? uh, I would say even before then, like 98 or something like that. Those are also small, the Jeep Wranglers. 
Yeah, the that's head. the tiny shit. I don't. I don't like. They're so small. Yeah, I wasn't a Wrangler but fan. That's the I, shit you want in like a zombie apocalypse, though. A Wrangler? Yeah. You want that because it's like you could drive. It's it's like propped up and you got the nice tires on it. So you could just I drive. Would take a Dodge Caravan in a zombie apocalypse because I've, I've seen some fucking high speed chases or caravans and maybe in movies too. Those shits have been lit on fire. Those shits have been like. Bro, those shits don't even have four wheel drive, I don't think. Those shits will withstand the end of the fucking world. I'm telling nah, you. You're that shit buggy. drives like. Two wheels would be popped. That shit is still avoiding the police. This shit is doing, like, those 360, like, drifting turns. Bugging. Dodge Caravan is no joke. That shit should be in the next, like, Tokyo fucking Need for Speed, whatever movie. How many Fast and the Furiouses have there been? Fast and Furious, that's what I meant. Imagine everyone's pulling up in, like, these Mitsubishi Eclipse and, like, all these Ferraris. And some, like, okay. Japanese dude shows up in a Dodge Caravan. <laughs> and he revs the engine and it's just really weak. <laughs> got, like... A whole soccer team in his back seat. By the way, I typed in Fast and the Furious to Google. The first yeah. thing that pops up is Fast and the Furious, and the second thing is Fast and the Furious 9. That's too many. Yeah, there's way too well, many, man. No, I saw an article that they're trying to go to the moon now, too, so that could start a whole new um, fucking series of movies. Who's trying to go to the moon? Like, the peop- the characters from Fast and the Furious, they said, like, the moon's not out of play. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I mean, people would go see it if you could somehow like do some car or like some test, like some Tesla type of car <laughs> that goes to the moon. Stupidest movie in human history. <laughs> well, movies are stupid now. I have been to movies in bad luck, but I want to see like. <laughs> see, but I get nobody seems to get mad at this like I do. But I'm so mad that there's never original shit anymore. It's always like we got a new Superman, we got a new Batman. We got a new Lion King. We got a new Aladdin. Blanca or some shit like that. It's always some new, th- some new, th- some remake of an old movie. Why can't you just hit me with some totally original shit? And I'll tell you why. Because they know that that's not a guarantee to make money. If you mm-hmm. remake a Lion King, it's a guarantee to make money. But if you come up with some totally new shit, it's not a guarantee at all. So did a lot of the movie companies go bankrupt back in the day with like making whack ass movies? I don't know. They I don't probably know. did because I think all those like. Like the shit where um, the globe opens up, you know, like when they when they show the movie company in the beginning and it's the globe. Yeah, but what's the name of that company? I don't know. Paramount Pictures, which, maybe. Which one is uh, Harvey Weinstein? Is that Miramax? I think so. Miramax. Which, Paramount. Which one's Miramax? I know there's the lion. There's the lion who like is on the pyramid shit, and that's like twentieth. 20th century yeah paramount is the one with the mountain okay paramount's the mountain but there used to be the one with the globe you know what i'm talking about i do but i don't remember the fucking name of it and that shit used to have bangers there was the mountain there was the globe and there was the lion are we missing any i don't so what should i type in to find this um movie production companies yeah Movie production. Major movie production companies. Yeah. Castle Rock, American... No, there's no way this is... This is... uh... Okay, here we go. There's Walt Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal, Universal, Columbia, and Paramount. Yeah. What's What's the lion? Um, let's see. Let's type in... 20 at something. It's either Warner Bros. or Universal. Universal used to make bangers, but you don't see... Oh, Metro. No, Metro. It's got to be Universal with the line, right? Metro Golden Mayor. The fuck? MGM. 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 Wow. No, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. There's another one that's like... Yeah, no, MGM has got the lion. That's it. Yeah, they've got the lion, but there's another one of, like, a pyramid, and it's, like, gold. It's, like, the screen's all goldish. (laughs) Is it Disney? Does Disney do that? Oh. Walt Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal, Columbia. It's got to be Columbia. Maybe Columbia? It's got to be Columbia. It's got to be Columbia, I'm telling you. Columbia Pictures. 100% it's got to be Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, it's the the lady holding the fucking shit in the air. (laughs) Yeah. 
No, one. that's not the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's like 20th, 20th something. 20th Century Movies? 20th Century Fox. Yes. Yes, is that... 20th Century Fox. What does their shit look it like? It looks kind of like a pyramid, but it's not a pyramid. It says 20th Century Fox. And like I the think sh- that's it. I yeah, think that's, that's got to be it. In like the shape of a square, but it kind of looks like it could be a pyramid. Damn. Yeah, that's like some pyramid shit. So that's Fox? Like, is that the same Fox that does, like, Fox It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be Foxes all under one umbrella. That's crazy how Fox can sort of, like, have some fucked up channel like Fox News, but then just have, like, Fox 5 and still be, like, trying to be normal there. Bro, they got, I mean, think about it, man. They got, like, six companies control everything. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, when it comes to the media... There's like six companies that control everything. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of crossover. Like you think when you're flipping through the channels and you got like 300 channels, you're like, oh, I'm looking at like all different stuff. No, because you could divvy all 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 300 channels. You could split it up into six different parent companies that own a bunch of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like radio, it's even worse. Like when, when the whole Howard Stern shit happened and they came out with like Clear Channel. Yeah. Like they oversee all the radio stations and shit like that. So like they're all the same... You know, like Pretty Z100. Much, or, yeah. Like, it's got to be the same thing with TV, too. There's, like, six umbrellas that they all, like... Exactly. Like, BT, Comedy Central, they all, un- like, all those stations fall under one umbrella. Like, they all lead back to some shit. Exactly. There's, like, a big consolidation in the media. That's crazy. So, you know what I wanted to mention to you? I know you're not going to want to watch this, but I wanted to share it with everybody because people should watch it. Um... <clears throat> What was it called? Confession Tapes. It's another Netflix thing. It's called The Confession Tapes. Confession Tapes? What's yeah. the, who's this now? It's all about false confessions. Stories of false confessions that were given to police. And and you watch it and you walk away. Is it exciting? Aw- well, yeah, because you walk away from it going. And it's all like real life shit. Like real life stories of what happened. And what you learn is that people do false confessions all the time, dog. Because they'll like... Well, the prosecutors are, like, experts at their shit, so they could be, like, the LeBron James getting you to confess to something. The detectives, yeah. They'll play Mm -hmm. good cop, bad cop, but what they do is, and this is why it's so fucked up, they'll put you in a room, and they'll keep you there for, like, 15 hours straight, and you haven't slept, and you're mad tired, and they just wear you down, and they break you down to the point where you think, I'm just going to tell them whatever the hell they want me to tell them just in hopes I can go home. And then people tell them, and then they're like, I can go home now, and then they're like, no, you're going to jail, bro. You just admitted to murder. (gasps) so grimy yeah it's so bad but anyway everybody's got to watch that the confession tapes because there's like in my opinion i don't forget how many episodes there were at least six and like i feel like most of them it's so obvious that the people didn't do it there's still a few where i'm like eh, maybe they did do it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so but that's what makes it such an interesting thing is that like some of them some of them you can tell that they didn't do it. Other ones, you're not sure, but it's just interesting to see how fucked up the cops are. Some of them are really bad, man. Like, they straight up went into these black dudes' houses, these black kids' houses, and just started arresting them and said they were all part of a gang. What? And they weren't even part of a gang, but they just hung out. Is it out. recent shit, or is it all old stuff? What's that? Was it recent, like, some recent stuff, or all old shit? I think it's all... It. I don't know, it varies. Some shit goes back to, like, 1980s. Some shit goes... Like, 1990s, 2000s. Like, there's nothing super, super new. But there's yeah. it's, it's a lot of important stories that people need to know about. Because then yeah. you learn, like, you, you, confessions are not the end-all, be-all. You know what I mean? Like, you need... This is what, what I was talking about. There should be a law that you need physical evidence to convict on something. Mm-hmm. Because it's just so easy to manipulate people, and it's so easy for people to... And you would think, like, people naively think, like, oh... The prosecutor is always trying to get the answer. No, when the cops make their mind up and they think somebody's guilty, sometimes they just work backwards from that conclusion and try to force that to be the case. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they'll try to, like, pin it on them even though they didn't do it. And it's Doesn't so, it also look, like, a lot better for the prosecutors and stuff if they, like, get a convicted, you know? Yeah, if they, get a con- they want their conviction rate to be as high as possible. So sometimes it's like they're not even looking for the right answer. Mm-hmm. They're just looking for a answer just to Isn't get... That what, um- like um, Kamala Harris is like taking some heat for is yeah. that in California she did some shit like that? Well, yeah, she tried to keep people who were innocent locked up because I guess it would have hurt her conviction rate or something if they were released. 
but she fought to keep him locked up when evidence proved that somebody was innocent. And um, she uh, she did it on a technicality. She said like, "Oh, he was late with his paperwork or some shit." Oh, and yeah. then like she also stalled like like cases too, right? She seems pretty fucked up. It seems like more and more shit is coming out about her. That's yeah, just grimy. She's been tanking in the polls though, which oh, I'm happy to say is a prediction that I was wrong about. I thought at the end it'd probably be Bernie versus Kamala as at the end, but it doesn't look like that now. She's really fallen off. It's crazy how I, I watched one of your segments on Biden, how like he felt like I think you made the point that you were just like if Bernie did one of these slip ups, that shit would they'd be like drop out, drop out. He's too old. He's bro. Did you hear the new one? Up. I'm about no. to play the new one for you. Well, yeah, but it's it. scary how like I mean, like you said it. It's almost just like well, I'm not making fun of him. It's 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 bad to about like, it's bad. You know, All right. Listen to this one. This is the new one. Hello. Friend, time friend, and she's a friend. She's been my friend in and out of public life. My long friend, time friend, and she's a friend. She's been my friend in and out of public life. Uh, Bro. Friend, time friend, and she's a friend. What is it? it? Sounds like he's making a remix. Like it's <laughs> like some <old> way. <laughs> That's his brain skipping. Like his brain is jumping around in time. You know what I mean? That's why he keeps repeating. I don't know why people are such advocates for him. Like even my girls on the View, and I haven't watched the show in a while. But, like, he came on this shit, and he, like, didn't know if he can give them a hug and all this stuff, and then he left, and they were talking about him. Like, he was, like, the old grandfather at the retirement home and was just, like, I felt bad for him. He didn't know if he can give me a hug, and, you know, he wanted to, and he told me afterward. It's just, like, this guy's running for president. Like, he's not your boy. It's mad annoying that, like, the media still defends him and acts like he's the most electable, even though he's not. It's just so obnoxious. They, like, show the, his wife's clip of telling people to vote for him because, like... I'm she like, was like, she was like, other people might be better on policies, like, say, health care. <laughs> That's her way of saying, like, okay, whatever, Medicare for All is the right answer and Bernie's right about it, but, but... How can you just be like, yeah, other people are better, Yeah, but you, you want to vote for you my know, husband because my he's husband. Likeable. Who sucks dog shit, by the way, is so bad. And he's really terrible, but you got to think, like, he's better than Trump, right? Don't you want to beat Trump? So maybe him, even though he's not good, because Trump? (laughs) They don't even make an argument. But who's filling out, like, these fucking polls? Because I know, like, millennials and, like, like, younger kids and, like, is there younger than millennials that can vote? Or, like, Gen X or whatever the hell, like our shit is i'm i'm not filling out a survey online and telling you who i want to vote they'll say like they'll give you the sample size and how many people they spoke to and everything um but yeah it's the reason why he still got like a little bit of a lead actually a recent poll just came out that had uh bernie and elizabeth warren both above him it was like 20 percent, 20 percent, 19 percent. so it's basically a tie at the top Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's all old people who that's what i'm saying like no kids like you're not knocking on a young kid's door and like getting that survey answer well they're propping him up someone they're propping him up in the polling there really is a generational divide there's there are a bunch of divides in this country there's a class divide obviously Mm -hmm. then there's just the partisan divide but the generational divide is huge because you talk to an old democrat and they have totally different opinions than a young democrat Old Democrat is not looking for any kind of revolution or anything. They're comfortable with Biden, even though his brain is melting in real time. But young people are like, fuck all that noise. We want Bernie. The recent poll that came out had Bernie. Obviously, he leads with young people. But interestingly enough, he also leads with people of color and women. And that's hilarious because the narrative about him for so long has been like, oh, it's all white bros who support him. Mm -hmm. All like these Bernie bros. And the polls show that he does best with women and people of color. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he's he's been fighting for women and people of color for so long, you he's know? Fighting for everybody for so long. He's fighting man. for everybody for so long, and he's never foot-flopped. And I didn't see the clip, but there's that one lady that was actually, I think she was on the stage with you at Politicon, and um, she was saying that, like, Bernie keeps talking, 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 and then, like, the one time where they ask him, like, about the policy or whatever, that's when he gets quiet, but which is not true. It's not even close to true. By the way, she said that the same week. That Bernie released like three incredibly detailed new policy proposals. They keep doing it. They keep saying like, 
crazy things that are just the opposite of reality. And and it's funny how he's always the first one to implement some shit, and then everybody else in the race sort of catches up with their own, you know, like um, fucking idea of it. And it's There's just been like, memes oh, of that. You get that. There's been memes of that on Twitter where they have like. Bernie will give a long ass answer, and then they'll say Elizabeth Warren, what he said, except a little bit shittier. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That is like, what she oh, does. Like, like oh, like, him, except not as good. Like, I'll yeah. just, it's like with the the um, student loan debt shit. Hit, Bernie's a, is eliminate it all. Yeah, and hers is like eliminate a certain percentage of it. Yeah, so it's and like it, she's so like, yeah, 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 student debt yeah. elimination, but just not as good as him. <laughs> And then Beto tried to do that shit too, right? But his was only like four teachers or something like that. Beto? Yeah, didn't he try to do like a eliminate? Oh, no, that Beto? was Kamala. Kamala did that. Oh, yeah, it's just like yeah. the shit. It was, it it was mad specific. Shit. It was like teacher. <laughs> it was like student loan debt cancellation for teachers who who like opened up a fucking store in the. <laughs> so specific. It was so stupid. People were making fun of that, man. He moves the needle literally on everything and like puts shit on the table that everyone starts talking about and gets no credit for that shit. You know what's great though? It's so great to watch like all the frauds collapse. Like Beto is at 1%, bro. He's doing bad. Like remember when he launched and the media was trying to hype him up? And, yeah. Like they had him on the cover of magazines and stuff like posing yep. and shit. And then the one now, that I was gonna take off was Buttigieg or whatever. I haven't even heard a fucking peep out of that motherfucker. Well, he's not at 1%. Like he's still got an outside chance. Mm-hmm. But like watching Beto implode, I've enjoyed because he was so hyped up and it was all fake. And I predicted it too. I was like, "There's no way this guy's gonna do well." And then like immediately he went down in the polls. And he must get so gassed because he'll occasionally just have that one viral video of like him dropping f bomb or like saying something <laughs> cool that goes viral, and but he definitely fake. have his campaign manager like, "This is it. This is gonna bump you back up into it." And he's like, "Yeah, you think?" No, but it, the thing that made me mad about that is that some people fell for it, and I was like, that shit was fake as fuck, too. They acted like, that. Like I heard some people say, like, oh, this is good, because this is a moment he wasn't scripted. He was definitely thinking of that shit. Hell he, yeah. Yeah, he was like, he was asked a question about, like, tr- is Trump racist? And he was like, oh, gosh, oh, oh, you know, man, like, with these questions, bro, like, these are not good questions. And everybody was like, oh, look at him being so real. It's like, what the fuck? And that everything that dude does is staged, man. Yeah. He, I, yeah. The politician talk is always hilarious when he does like the weird pauses. He's just starting to speak weirder and weirder. Like he doesn't talk like a normal person. <laughs> it is anymore. getting weirder, isn't it? It's not even like it's staying the same. It's like it's getting worse. It's getting a lot worse. I actually watched his I think I said before, his he had a, a Netflix special or something like that. Who did? Beto, Beto. What Beto. he had a Netflix special? Yeah, Stop it was it. like when he was running for office. What, what did he run for? Governor? Oh, and, te- and when he lost to Ted Cruz, because yeah. he fucking in like the fi- the final half of his campaign, he stopped being like a. He started out by acting like he was Bernie, and mm-hmm. he he went up in the polls, and then he became more like centrist as the campaign went on, and then he went uh-huh. down in the polls. I I think. It'll be interesting, man, because, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you look at just the eye test of all these pictures, and maybe because I just follow Bernie. I don't follow, like, Elizabeth Warren or anybody else, really. But, like, every one of Bernie's rallies, it's insane how many people show up, you know? Like, yeah. is the same thing happening at Elizabeth Warren rallies? She, and is, she, getting, she rallies? is getting more people to her rallies now. Like, she's got oh, a really? decent number of people that show up. And she's also doing pretty well in the polls now, too. So Really? Yeah, right now you have Biden, you have Bernie, and you have Elizabeth Warren are the top three. I hope Bernie doesn't fizzle out. I mean, not like him personally, but like his just his whole, you know, like Elizabeth Warren's the I new. I mean, listen, it's one of those things where he's doing everything right, so you can't be upset because if he w- if he wasn't doing everything right, and then he doesn't win, it's like it's hard to digest that because you think, what if? Mm-hmm. what if he did it right then he could have won but as of right now he's doing everything right so when he's doing everything right you're just giving it your best and you can't be upset you know what i mean like there's a comfort in knowing he's doing everything he possibly can yeah but then it could st- it still gets me mad that like people don't realize that you know like it's sad to think that there's a lot of elizabeth warren supporters 
who were Bernie supporters that switched over her for for what reason? You know, I don't know how many. I would be interested to see how many people actually did that because I'd be surprised if there were that many. Because Bernie people, she has so many supporters. I mean, she has a lot of supporters, but they weren't necessarily old Bernie supporters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's just more. He's got. He's better on policy than she is. She's not as in favor of Medicare for all. And she's not as good on foreign policy. And that enough. Mm-hmm. I just saw an article, we'll probably cover it on the, my next show. Um, she's cuddling up to the Democratic establishment, trying to like let them know, like, hey, it's okay. Don't you don't have to look at me like I'm your enemy, like wink, wink, nod, nod type stuff to the Democratic establishment. Who? Oh, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. So, and that's why people are like, they don't trust her as much because. She's trying to get in their back pocket, like get some Hillary Clinton type shit. She's not Bernie, is the point. She's not like uniquely principled. You know what I mean? She's yeah, not terrible, starts... but she's not Bernie. Wasn't she on the Breakfast Club too when she started out as a Republican? Yeah, back in the day, in the nineties, she was a Republican. Like, I think she That's switched in ninety six. Charlemagne the God was the one that like called her out on that, and um, and she didn't have an answer for him. Oh, she didn't have a good answer. No, she just sat there and like they like moved on to the next question. Yeah, I mean, in her defense, it's not like her becoming a Democrat. Like, okay, she's not as bad as like Hillary is because Hillary kept being shitty on policy. Yeah. Whereas with Elizabeth Warren, she's been really good on tax policy and really good on Wall Street policy. So I can't treat her the same way and think of her the same way I think of Hillary. Yeah. So I'm not as worried about the past Republican stuff. But what I am worried about is... Her views now, which are still pretty bad on foreign policy and still pretty bad on Medicare for all, because she's not really showed me how committed she is to it. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of hers. When's the next debate? I don't know. I'm not sure. I saw people were getting mad at De Blasio because he went to like L.A. or like he missed some shit in New York, but then agreed to do like Pod Save America in L.A. and then go to like a Dodgers what did he miss in game? New York? I don't even know. <laughs> but, like, it was something that, like, they said, I guess, wasn't big enough for him. I don't yeah. know. But he's not really moving anything, right? No. He's he's a, he's down at 1% or less. What about that one lady who's, like, all spirit and peace, peace and love? Marianne Williamson. She's a 1%er. Yeah. She at 90% right now? She pulling at the top? <laughs> I like how she had her moment in the debate. And... Well, she's I, just fucking weird, and that's, like, what draws people's attention. Because, like, didn't they say she was the most Googled person after the No, date? that was Tulsi. That was Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, really? She was the most Googled person, yeah. Oh, I thought they said they were looking up the Marianne lady, too. No, I mean, she probably got a lot of people looking her up, but in all the debates that Tulsi was in, she was the number one Googled. Oh, really? Yeah, but she might not make the debate stage next, which is pretty sad, actually, because the DNC is, like, cherry-picking polls. Yeah. Saying, oh, no, 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 you got to be a 3% in like three polls or more, and she's reached it in more than three polls, but they're saying these ones don't count. <sighs> yeah, it's mad grimy. Super grimy. Who decides that shit? Like the just... DNC. The DNC. The fucking asshole Democratic establishment. That's who decides and they, it. And, like, of course they're going to still have a bias against Bernie. You know, like... And for people to think that they're not, that they don't, is just crazy. And he's been, I mean, that's the thing, is he's hes a nicer guy than a lot of a lot of people like me who support him, because he's tr- still being a nice dude. Like, he's still coloring within the lines, mm-hmm. trying to build bridges, doing the right thing, but I don't think he gets that they'll still try to stab him in the back, you know? That's what I'm saying. Anybody else would love to, like, sue the DNC, and, like, it would have gotten real ugly, and they'd probably be saying shit about them. Yeah, but no, he didn't do that. He was like, he he actually endorsed Hillary and campaigned for Hillary, even though people still accuse him today of not doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, he gets, no matter what he does, he gets like the dumbest possible criticisms against him. And he gets people stabbing him in the back, the people with power in the DNC and then the Democratic Party. Is it true that um, they've only raised like $20 million for the Amazon shit? The raincoats? Yeah, at the at the G7, at the summit, they were like, an emergency fund of $20 million, and then people were responding and saying, like, the budget for Paul Blart Mall Cop was $30 million. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that comparison, because that movie was a banger. Yeah, 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 that movie was a good movie. 
I enjoyed it. I saw when like the Notre Dame Cathedral shit went on. Like that thing got like a billion dollars. Yeah, this? they were like they gave a billion dollars for that, but they're not giving twenty million to save the world. Because <laughs> apparently twenty percent of the Earth's oxygen comes from that shit, right? Comes because they call they call the um, Amazon rainforest the lungs of the world. Yeah. But they're just burning it down because the new guy there, Bolsonaro, is a fucking fascist. The uh, (laughs) the guy who's the president of Brazil, and he doesn't care. He he wants to sell off all the all the rights to the Amazon and give it to private companies. And that guy also, by the way, he um, he's repeatedly threatened Glenn Greenwald because Glenn Greenwald lives in Brazil and he's exposed like the corruption of the Brazilian government. And so this guy Hmm. Bolsonaro is like, like. It's been threatening Glenn Greenwald. His minions have been threatening Glenn Greenwald. Uh, that guy should get the fuck out of Brazil. I, I mean, I've never said that to him because I assume a thousand people have told him. Oh, you know him? Yeah. But oh, I've never said it to him, but I assume a thousand people have already said it to him. But he's that dude has balls of steel, bro. That's he, what I'm saying. Like, he, he, Glenn is the type of dude where if something were to happen with him, to him, he knows that, like, it's almost like he's a legend and that would go down as so legendary that it's like he becomes this icon he becomes this you know what i mean like you you become bigger than like you're bigger even not if you're not around to see the shit like if the brazil fucking like drug enforcement comes out and no i know but it snipes you out of your house it's almost like I don't know how to I, word I, this. I, I sort of understand what you like. What you like? He's and he's, I'd be curious to talk to him about that too. Like, and just flat out ask him, like, if something happened to you, like, what what would you make you, of that? Like, <laughs> is you like? I really would like to talk to him about that, but I couldn't bring that up because I'd feel really bad about it. Yeah. Well, like he's okay. Like he understands that that shit could be like a huge, powerful movement or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Like, he gets that that's like a catalyst type thing that would... Does Snowden still live in Russia or whatever? Yeah, he still does. And, it's... like, what? I thought his deadline was coming up or some shit. I don't know, but he couldn't get a fair trial here. That's what I'm saying. So he's just like... But, like, he's still... I feel like it was mad long ago that they were like, today's the last day where he can be in Russia because there's some court trial shit. I don't know about that. He has asylum there. Maybe and then the, the the WikiLeaks guy lives there too. Julian Assange has been arrested. Oh really? Yeah, Julian Assange was arrested. That's uh, Damn. that's another bullshit thing right there. I feel like Snowden has like been living at an airport or some shit for dumb long. No, you're thinking of Assange, and Assange was living at uh, <laughs> the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Oh, d- <laughs> that's so random. <laughs> but he got uh, he got arrested recently. Damn. Yeah, it's bullshit what they're trying to arrest him on, or what they did arrest him on. So who's trying to arrest him, the U.S. people? Well, he was arrested in London, but I think the U.S. is trying to get him extradited here because they we, they, we want to try him on, um, you know, leaking classified information or printing classified information or something in relation to um, the Chelsea Manning information yeah, yeah, yeah. that showed that we were killing civilians. Like, he exposed that we were killing civilians, and so now the government will stop at nothing to, like, destroy him and ruin his life. And, by the way, Chelsea Manning is still in prison because she's refusing to testify against Julian Assange. And she's being fined, like, $1,000 a day or something crazy. When they want to come after you, man, they just ruin your life. That's, That's what just, I'm saying. They just so flat out ruin your life. For not testifying against a dude who they don't even have in the U.S. to try. Yeah. And, that makes no sense. And she also served. Chelsea Manning was also in prison for Mad Long, and she was part or commuted. Her, her sentence was commuted. Obama commuted it, and then now they're bringing her back because they want her to testify against him or something. It's really uh, weird, but they're just ruining his life. That's crazy. And they're trying to do the same shit with Snowden, right? Like they're trying to bring him back, but like they can't. No, with Snowden, I think he's. He's just good, and he's, like, there in Russia. I know he probably doesn't want to be in Russia, but he's there in Russia, and he's re- he's not moving. He's safe, and, like, so he would love up. to come back, but they're, they would immediately like, arrest try him. him. Yeah, yeah, arrest him. It's really, yeah, it's bullshit, wild. because he's not allowed to use the public good defense. So, in other words, he exposed that the NSA was spying on all of us. Mm-hmm. 
and just showed it to us in no uncertain terms. And he's not allowed to say in court, I did it because it was the right thing to do because Americans needed to know that they were being spied on and because it's unconstitutional under the Fourth Amendment. He's not allowed to say that in court. He, they, they don't let him say this was for the benefit of the public. <laughs> Which is crazy, I know. It's insane. That's like his that's that's his whole reason. That's like his, his whole, whole shit. Exactly. Defense. Yeah. So in other words, they would just railroad him. <laughs> and people are saying, like, oh, why doesn't he come back and have your day in court? It's because he wouldn't get a fair day in court. That's why. Yeah. Is you it know? against the rules to like say that you were trying to look out for the American people? He, well, yes, because he's not allowed to use that defense because they would try him under, I think, the Espionage Act. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. So for whatever reason under that you're not allowed to Damn, man. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. It's really fucked up. It's really fucked up. He probably watches your shit. I, you know, I've thought I, I've thought about asking Glenn one time, like, yeah, does does Edward Snowden like know, know who I am? But I didn't bother. He definitely has a secular talk shirt. <laughs> nah, he doesn't have a shirt, but he it is possible he's seen the show. He's definitely seen the shit. Well, because I'm one of only like five people who defend him. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, all the mainstream media shits on him. Yeah, I mean, they shit on everybody. If you're not like Hillary Clinton or Bob Dole or Ross Perot. Bob Dole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, or man. Or Roman Stamos and John Stamos. That guy's creepy, John Stamos. <laughs> There's certain people who are just like too good looking and it's like it kind of affected their personality. Yeah. John Stamos is one and Mario Lopez is another. You know who's... Still good looking, but it hasn't really affected his personality, I don't think, is Rob Lowe. Oh, it definitely has affected his personality. Fuck you. Yeah. You think so? I'm oh, cool hell yeah. Him, he, he's mad right wing, bro. Oh, damn. Now I'm not cool with him. <laughs> yeah, he's mad right is wing. Is he really? Yeah, he is. Oh, that sucks. I was just watching the roast of Rob Lowe. They had like all the roast on it. Was, they had Rob Lowe, yeah. they had James Franco. Who else did they do? They have one of Donald Trump. Have you ever seen the Trump one? I'm not sure I have. I don't know if I've watched the whole shit, but is Jeffrey Ross there? Yeah, they they did a legit roast of Donald Trump back in the really? day. I, gotta I, watch I think it. Jeffrey Ross did it because he does all of them, right? He does all of them, yeah. I think he did yeah. too. Oh, I think, and there was a big like T behind him or some shit. Whenever or, people get mad about jokes, I always think like, do yourself a favor and watch the roasts because they're hilarious yeah. and they're like so over the top. I would love to get roasted by like a whole segment of Comedy Central people. Yeah, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Where they just dunk on you a thousand ways. And then at the end, you could just fire back at all of them. But they're good. No, they're good. Some I, of them. Have I told you the story about Ann Coulter? About uh, how... Because uh, she did one of the roasts. I forget. who. Which one did she do? She did... Um, Bruce, she did Bruce Rob Willis? Lowe. Oh, Rob Lowe she did. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, she she did it, and she didn't do any of the jokes that were written for her. That guy, Tony Hinchcliffe, the comedian, he's also a writer... He spoke yeah. about it on Rogan's podcast back in the day. He said his job was to write for Ann Coulter, so he wrote jokes for her, and she was just like, I'm not doing any of these. And he was like, well, what are you going to do? And she was like, I'm just going to I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it. And he was like, all right, bro. And she went out there and just bombed so Bomb hard. was terrible. Because none of it was funny. Book. Like, she, does, she didn't get that you have to be a little self-deprecating. You can't take yeah. yourself too seriously. You know, and you have to speak everything and she just didn't flow. Yeah, she's too. She's incapable. She's a robot. Yeah, she's incapable of like sympathizing with people and like seeing it from their view and being self deprecating. She'll probably be back at Politicon. God. It's just, like not relevant anymore. No, that's why it was so funny when she backed out of the debate with me and then she went on. She went on to like some LA daytime TV show and was like, nobody on the left will debate me. And then one of them brought up like Anna Kasparian, who she debated, who Ann Coulter debated previously. Yeah. And, he, and she said something so snobby, like, how many bestsellers does she have? And it's like, so, okay, so your point is you don't think anybody, she's like Bill Maher and thinking that nobody in new media matters at all. And that's yeah. not a thing. And so she's just super snobby. Like what she doesn't understand is if she did that debate with me, the room would have been 90% my people. Yeah. And she's going into it thinking, like, like she's the more well-known one? Like, why? Because people have well, seen your fucking face on TV when nobody likes you? It. 
What's that? that? That's Loki. Why she doesn't want to do it because she knows she's going to get. Now, the, it's going to be totally against her. I don't think so. I feel like she didn't do it because she's a snob. You think and, really? Yeah, and she thought like, "Who's this guy? I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I'm not debating him." I think she. I feel like she knows. She knew who you were, and mm, I don't think she did. I think she was super snobby and thought like, "Who's this nobody? Oh, he's on the internet. Pff, I don't care about him." That's fuck. why, like the girl that or the lady that you did debate. She had to take the approach that she took, which was just like, I'm going to try to cater to the audience because I know all these motherfuckers are against me, you she, know? Well, yeah, but she learned that when she walked into the room. Yeah. She was and like, she, oh, what have I done? What have I signed up for? She called a quick audible, like, I'm going to have to open up with this shit and sort of start to agree with because like... But that was, was smart on her part. On shit. That was smart on her part because she knew how yeah. it would have went if she was like trying to actually go at me. The few yep. times she did try to go at me, she... I did barely yeah. need to say shit because the audience was like, boo. Yeah. Yeah. Is she still doing shit? Is she, is that yeah, like Russian? Yeah, she just has a show TV on network? RT. She has a show on RT, I think. That's still Russian television? It's, yeah, it's Russia Today, but it's not like people try that shit called Russia Today and it is like US shit? Well, Russia, in the same way that like CNN has like the international version, the US version, the version for different countries overseas. It's the same yeah. thing for RT. Like, there's a RT America, and she's on RT America, where it just covers American stuff. It just seems like such a station that, like, we'd be against right now. Like, yeah, some but it's, shit. yeah, but it's not like it's not that serious. It's it's just a no. It's like the BBC. Okay. But, you know what I mean? Like, nobody thinks all yeah. oh, the BBC that's British propaganda. Yeah. Because it's just like, who's working there? So at RT, they had Ed Schultz was working there. Like, there's a lot of people who are good, like, probably better than anybody, anybody in, in mainstream media who are working there, so. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it. If you want to take whatever RT says with a grain of salt on issues involving Russia, by all means, but not to, to no reason to dismiss the whole network. You know what I mean? No, I know. I don't even know what the, is there shit on the internet? I've never even well, seen it. Well, they have or... a bunch of stuff on U YouTube. They have a pretty big YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, okay. They also have a TV channel, but it's, it doesn't get a lot of viewership. Yeah, I've never heard of RT. Yeah, like doesn't. when she told me she was on that shit, I was like, oh, I don't even know what the fuck that was. Yeah, she doesn't get a lot of viewership. They, is they there just a, don't. Uh, Mexico today? There is no Mexico today, but there should be. Should be a Mexican. Uh, well, they ha we have Univision, right? That's yeah, true. And Telemundo. <laughs> oh. Remember back in the day when you when we were kids and you heard the the Spanish announcer t say goal? Yeah, they used to kill that. That shit. was my Dude. shit. You'd be like goal. Yeah. Ever. Go. <laughs> you would just keep going. They did that at my temple. I don't know for any of the Jewish fans listening, but like they had this thing called the shofar. Uh huh. And it was like a a ram's horn. I think that's what it is. And, like, at, I think it was Yom Kippur, like, one of the high holidays, the guy would, like, he'd be, like, he'd do, like, bam, 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 and then, like, his last shit would be, like, the... He would just the, keep going? Shit. Yeah, it would be dumb long. <laughs> he'd be, like, he'd, be like, take a deep breath, and he'd be, like, <laughs> bam, that shit would go on forever. That shit is so funny. That would make me laugh so much. I don't know how you didn't laugh. I probably did, but I would always just be mad hype for like, oh shit, he's about to do the big banger. <laughs> we just kill it. Yeah, we killed it. All the Jewish people listening know what the fuck I'm talking about too. That's so funny. Just temple. There was mad shit like that in Catholic Church too. That was just weird. Just like the priest sucking your dick for dumb long. It was mad weird when you would just suck everybody <laughs> off who was under the age of twelve. You know. <laughs> take a breath. Um. No, what weird shit did they do? They, like, the songs were weird in, in church, in Catholic church. But they used to have bangers, too, right? I used to like, like, Kirk Franklin was a gospel singer, and he used oh, to no, make Oh, no, no, that, that, those are legit singers. What I'm talking about is, you'd go to church, and they would have somebody who they hired who does, like, the gospel songs or whatever. Yeah. And they were just whack. Like, they couldn't sing well, and it was just... Oh, really? The microphone was whack, and they would just start singing, and you'd be like, oh... I guess I know just like all these like Chris Brown movies and stuff where it looks like they're just killing it. Like it's yeah, just but that's like black churches history. kill it. Black churches kill oh. it. They're, they seem mad fun. White churches yeah. are just like, damn, this is boring <laughs> as fuck. 
It's true. Even like the even like the I still remember to this day sitting there and hearing like the gospel and the homily or whatever it's called, and uh-huh. the, and the priest would be like, and then Jesus said to <laughs> Matthew, Ephesians seventeen twenty one. And he'd be I trying see. to sing it, or he's talking? No, this is the part where they're talking. Oh. Like, giving the sermon or whatever, and it's just like, And Matthew said to them, I shall turn water into wine. Oh. And you're just sitting there like... And, did were, like, would people actually vibe to that shit, though? That's what I'm saying, is I don't know how many people went to the church, because they feel like, this is the shit that I've been doing my whole life, and my family does it, and my mom and dad tell me it's right, so I'm just going to keep going, yada yada. Yeah. And I don't know how many people went and were like, oh, I can't wait to hear what they're going to say. Cause, that's what I'm saying. Because like, like, everybody wake up and get amped to that shit. Yeah, that's, but like, there's got to be some, like, there's definitely some people who are like Buddhists or whatever, who like can't wait to go and like hear whatever the religious teaching is because it's some deep shit. There's definitely somebody going to the black church who's like, I can't wait for the pastor to break it down on some shit today. And the yeah. pastor's like breaking it down on on whatever issue it may be, selfishness, greed. It, but when you went to Catholic Church, the church I went to, it was just boring the whole time. That's man. what I'm saying. It's like Pastor Bob, and it's just like... Nah, it's priests. In Catholic, ch- oh. Catholic Church, is priests. So pastors. it'd be like Priest Bob or some shit? It would, no, it would... No, you call him Father. Father, whatever. Yeah. But Bob they're Bills. called priests, though, even though you call them Father, whatever. So is a pastor almost just like a gangster father no, uh pastor is in i think protestant christianity not oh. cat, not catholicism because pastors are always the ones that get down yeah they're the ones who are just like rapping and like dancing and like got mad the like, dancing off their shit and they got the handkerchief and they're like yeah <laughs> oh jeez. have you ever watched some like late night preaching um no. <laughs> There's some hilarious shit that comes on late at night. There's like um, Creflo Dollar. You ever seen Creflo Dollar? That sounds like a rapper. Exactly. That Because he teaches what's called the prosperity gospel, which is this uh-huh. bullshit idea that like Jesus wants you to be rich or whatever. And so like it kind of mixes like consumerism and capitalism with Christianity in a weird yeah. way. But these dudes are obviously all like charlatans and, fraud- and frauds and con uh-huh. men. And, like, they'll be on TV, and they'll be preaching, and they'll be doing the thing you're talking about, where they, like, have the handkerchief, and they're like, Getting it's really our system. And you're like, wow, this is all a show. People fall for that shit, man. If you're vulnerable and, like, just need someone to listen to, like, you could really start your own shit if you went to, like, like some, like, middle class homeless people and like just got them to buy into your shit wait middle class homeless people <laughs> yeah like not like the bottom of the barrel homeless people like some middle class how could you be person. middle class and homeless if you're homeless you're not middle class you're poor not like no like there's there's levels to homelessness as opposed to like levels of like someone with a home like the middle class of the homeless so you're saying a homeless person who's not like totally out of it is that what you're saying yes. Yeah. Like a homeless person who's not like deeply schizophrenic or something? Yes. Okay. Like they're probably like willing to listen to some shit, you know? I don't know about homeless people. I I don't know because homeless, it's a unique situation because a lot of them have drug addiction and they need rehab. A lot of them have like legit hardcore mental illness. Some people are just temporarily down and out on their luck. But usually, I you know, I when I think of vulnerable people, I think of like... I think of, like, hippie-ass wine moms in, like, Ar- Orange County in California. You think so? They have, like, a husband who's never paid attention to them That's in the true. past, like, four years. And they're, There's like... There's got to be, like, some barrier that you break at first, though. But then they'll floodgates will probably open with those. Yeah, that's why, I like, all them who do yoga and shit, and they go... They're all just looking for some shit. Because remember the dude who was fucking, like, all of them? The the Beakram dude, <laughs> he was he was beating. Oh, he was fucking all of them, bro. Really? Yeah, he was getting down with all the wine moms. Wow, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, cause he, you know, some weird fake spiritual shit, and then they're just like, oh my god, he's so enlightened. Oh man, that's weird as fuck. Cause that guy, I think I saw him on sixty minutes or some shit like that, and he was like. Just like a regular ass dude, like wasn't even like really in shape or anything. Yeah, but that's the thing is when you have like a cult and you're the cult leader 
Everybody looks up to you. You're charismatic. That's the other. Th- Remember the dude, uh, David Koresh or whatever his name was when this was back when we were kids when they burnt the feds burnt down the um the thing in Texas that he had Waco. and all these people died and shit. Yeah, the Waco thing. Yeah, the Waco thing. Like yeah, they they were saying he was probably banging like everybody in there. That's weird. Yeah. That's scary. I just don't like thinking about any of that shit, man. There's so much weird shit that goes on. Yeah, you hate you hate the real life crime stuff. You can't deal with that real life crime stuff. It's just like it's overwhelming when you think it, it is overwhelming. Well, for me, that's what Bernie said that the other day. He was like, he he gets kept up at night by the thoughts of like how fucked up everything is. That keeps him up at night. I was like, damn man, you got to have the ability to like kind of turn that off in a way. And it's there's upsides and downsides because if you turn it off too long, you can get really callous and like not care about the world. But if you keep it on too long, you can drive yourself crazy. Yeah, I think I'm at the callous where I don't care point though. Well, that's that, and that's what I said after the the most recent mass shootings where we had like two in one day. Yeah, and they were two really bad ones. Yeah, I was like, I know my reaction should be like really outraged, but I just don't have it in me anymore. Yeah, it's just like a whimper. I was just like, "What do you expect?" That was my reaction. Was like, "What do you expect?" Like, even the as fucked up as it sounds, but even like. I don't know how your reaction to this was, but like the Amazon shit. And I have like a daughter too. So obviously I care what the future is going to be and all this stuff. But like, what am I, what am I going to do? That, like, that one hit, that one hit me a little harder than the mass shooting one. Really? Because yeah, it's, it was almost like a realization that like, oh, nobody's going to fix shit. Like that's how I felt about climate change for a hot minute now is that nobody's fixing shit. That's what I'm saying. And what can we do? Like, I watched your one segment. Um, it came up on Facebook about the CNN shit. You were like, I don't know if this is international or the regular CNN, but they dropped, like, something into, like, the water. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. I know the one you're talking about. That shit hit me for some reason. And I was just like, damn. Like, like all the ice is melting. And, like, I feel like we need that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. when I don't have ice in my freezer and I'm trying to, like, have a cold-ass soda... And I don't have ice. I'm tight. Because I'm like, damn, it's going to take mad long now. I got to freeze some ice. No, but like that one for some reason was like, that shit hit me. Because like they were like, there's a huge gap in the ice thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that like nobody's doing anything. Like we know how bad it is. We've seen all the things coming out about it, all the studies, all the scientists screaming from the top of their lungs. Every time they talk about it, it's worse than the worst case scenario that we predicted 10 years ago. But nobody's doing anything. But what can you do? You can't make it colder at that spot anymore. You can immediately stop using all fossil fuels and transition into a green economy where you have wind technology, solar technology, all renewable energy. Like, you could immediately do that because that's incredibly necessary, but we're not. We're not doing it. And not only are we not doing it, the one thing that we did to move a little closer to fixing it, the Paris Climate Agreement, the world's most powerful country, the U.S., pulled out of it. So, like, we're not doing anything to try to... Nothing. We're all just sitting around and acting like, well, somebody's going to figure this out at some point. No, bitch. Nobody's figuring anything out. Nobody's going to do shit. (laughs) Nobody's going to do shit. Because think about it. Even if if we get people who mean... Let's say in every country we elect people who acknowledge the reality of climate change and mean well and want to fix it. Yeah. Are we we all going to agree and find the perfect solution and actually implement it? That's how, what I'm saying. how are we going to implement it? Like, you can't get every country to fucking do this shit. Like, you're not going to, I mean, get like Colombia's president to be on board or some shit like that. Like, all you got to get everybody to be in agreement on some shit, which like is impossible. Yeah, and there's a weird dynamic too, where it's like the only way you'd even get shit done on this worldwide is legit having like authoritarian leaders just implemented super quickly but nobody wants authoritarians for good reason because authoritarians you know can also do really bad things and you never want any one person with like soul power but that's the only way to get some shit done is to have people who are like individual leaders of all the countries just do it and not doesn't key trump do that in some aspects like didn't he do that with the the veterans shit yeah actually he did he did It's, it's just like we're doing this yeah, because he he thought we could just do it through an executive order. Anytime you could do something through an executive order, yeah, it's good to use that avenue. 
but you can't do a full but climate you would change. You never do that shit for like climate change. Yeah, because there's too much too much spending would have to go into that, and for spending you need um, people to sign Congress. off. It's got to go through Congress. Yeah. Oh. Yeah that 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 one with the with the ice that that shit hit me. But like places like everywhere is gonna go to shit. But like Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois is gonna be good as fuck. Because it's cold you, now, but you'll think it'll be warmer then. No, not cold. But I've driven through like like the bottom of Illinois, and it's just been straight windmills. Like there, like there's oh, a oh. OD amount of windmills. Do you know what percentage of the grid in your state comes from like renewable energy? No, fuck no. You think I have the answer to that shit? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I figured <laughs> I'd ask. <laughs> no, but I'll drive like two hours south, and legit, it's all windmills. Like everything's gonna be burning. And everybody's going to be trying to be standing in those shits because, like, it looks ugly as fuck, but there's mad windmills. And I'm the like, windmills are ugly? I, I never understood why people thought they're ugly. They're just they're things. like 400 of them in a row. I don't know. Have you ever seen this? I have seen windmills, yeah. No, but, like, no, I mean, like, driving on the road and they're just, like, all around you? Uh, I, I mean, I've seen windmills. I know what they look like. So. No, I, no, I know, but there's a lot. It's, like, overwhelming. Like, it, I'm like... One or two probably could have been enough, but like they, they're just <laughs> rows of them. It's crazy. Like those places are gonna be like I drive through there and I'm like I just feel healthier right now. I feel like <laughs> like I feel like they're doing a good job here. I feel healthier. <laughs> if someone had to put all of those in. There's mad windmills in like southern Illinois. Yeah, and, I like, mean the technology is always. Like, people act like the technology is not good enough yet. It's good enough. Whether it's wind or solar, it's good enough. It's just a matter of we need to implement it. Yeah. But the fossil fuel industry won't let us because they own the government. It looks like some niche type of shit. I don't know if you could see it. Like, there's just rows of them. Yeah, that doesn't look ugly to me. Like for miles. But that doesn't look ugly. It's just like it's like buildings. It's like seeing buildings. It's like I don't think when I see a building. That's not seeing. That's like seeing, like that that game that people play with like the like yeah, with yeah. the ball and the jacks <laughs> yeah. or whatever it's called. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But that doesn't strike me as ugly. It just is. It just is what it is. It's like when I see a building or a city, I don't go like ew. It just is there. I don't know. It looks like come on. It looks Trump, like. Did you know Trump sued? Um, Looks like barbed wire. Trump put um, a golf course in like Scotland or something, and then he sued because they wanted windmills off the coast, and you'd be able to see it from the golf course. He was like, "I don't like to look at it. I'm not going to allow this," and he sued. I still can't believe he really tweeted like he's not going to put a Trump building in Greenland or something, right? That was a real tweet. I was like, yeah. "Don't worry, I won't put this building there." I'm sorry, but and I've had this conversation with so many people. I feel bad because he's so funny without even trying, like. He's such a bad person, and he's done so many bad things that I feel bad. But he's like, he's hilarious. He's made me laugh so many times. But it's sad. Like he shouldn't be making you laugh. I know. That's what I'm saying. Is like I feel bad because I know he's a bad person doing bad things. But he just makes me laugh because he's so silly. Was it recent that that I don't know who it was, but like she she didn't shake his hand and went to shake Melania's hand. That was a while ago, right? I don't remember what you're talking like, about. Because resurfaced. Maybe Lisa May or Theresa, Theresa May. Theresa May? I don't remember. I, I didn't oh. see this. There's like some shit where like she's like says hi to someone before him and then completely skips over his hand and shakes Melania's hand and he gives her like a look like, all right, I know what you're doing. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I didn't I see I it though. I think it was an old clip and that, that got resurfaced. Yeah, makes sense. But I'm telling you now, when the end of the world comes, everybody's not, no one's allowed in Illinois. <laughs> It's all yours. Did you it's see the old part. clip that resurfaced to him talking about the Bible? He was asked, no. like, what's your favorite Bible verse? And he was like, well, you know, look, I don't want to pick be- because it's all so tremendous. It's all so amazing. That... And he's like, are you Old Testament guy or New Testament guy? He's like, um, both, both. <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious. He's like so obviously a kid bullshitting his way through like the book report. It's just so funny to see. He knows what he's doing, man. He's a moron. It's semi-genius. Like, 
it is it, there's something to admire about how his persistence he just never stopped <laughs> like, like the jewish answer he knows like he's probably got mad like jewish executives that like sweat him that like aren't gonna flip flop on like you know like everyone just bows down to him man it's it, it's funny because even when he's caught like caught on some shit he just wiggles out of it <laughs> I know. He just moves on. That's the thing is that's so crazy is that like, and people, the Democrats still don't get this. They feel like at some point they'll just get him and it'll, it'll be over. But no, he's never going to stop making his case. Like he's he's never going to shut the fuck up. Even when and you li- c- catch him stone dead on some shit, like the Stormy Daniels thing. I was just going to say that. Like yeah. all these people crumble after the fact. Like he he just acted like wrong, fake news. I don't even know who she is. Oh, wrong. didn't he have like so many women lining up to sue him Mad like what women. happened with that yeah i don't know i don't know but they acted and said there's accusations of like sexual harassment and some yeah. say rape and all this shit and he's just like wrong <laughs> wrong i saw um avenatti like commented on your shit yeah fuck him it was hilarious <laughs> though that he reached out I, I tweeted something like, I'm glad the media learned their lesson and stopped allowing on narcissistic grifters after Avenatti. And I put up a little picture of uh, Scaramucci was on MSNBC, and it's like yeah, they're propping that asshole up now. And then Avenatti responds and says, like, I'm just going to leave this here. And it was, an, <laughs> it was an article that had Steve Bannon saying, like, Avenatti can beat Trump or something, as if that yeah. makes his point. As if Michael uh, or Steve Bannon, who's been wrong about a zillion things, somehow that guy has got, like, the final word on who's going to win. But, um... It's like that dude was literally searching his name. Like he types his name into Twitter and then trolls to see what people are saying about him. That's crazy. Imagine being that miserable and that pathetic. Well, th- people thought this dude was going to be our next president. Like pe- they were propping him up to like be the next president. And that's how stupid the media is, bro. They really prop that dude. I called it from a mile away. I saw that that dude was a fucking grifter, fake ass yeah. bitch. Yeah. I remember you telling me when we were in LA, we saw him at the hotel. And I was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck that guy. We saw him on his cell phone walking around outside the hotel. I'm like, like he was fucking guy. Rico Suave. Yeah, fuck him. Anyway, all right, let's wrap it up, son. We've been going for a hot minute. Uh, love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Much love. Peace.